Today, we're gonna take a field trip to the St. Louis Aquarium and see what it's like with nobody inside. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. You can support the channel instantly by liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you are notified whenever I upload new videos. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna move out of the basement and go on a field trip to the St. Louis Aquarium to see what it's like when there's nobody there. And during this quarantine period, like many public venues, the aquarium is not allowing any visitors at this time. So here's a brief history of the St. Louis Aquarium. It's only been open for about three months, give or take. So the aquarium opened on Christmas day, 2019 and has been open since then or up until the stay at home order went into place for St. Louis. And obviously it's loaded with animals that still need to be taken care of. Full transparency, I am in broadcast. I am a radio broadcaster. That is my day job. So I have some contacts there at the St. Louis Aquarium that I reached out to and they basically told me if I wanted to visit, they were gonna have to take my temperature. I was gonna have to wear a mask. There was gonna have to be social distancing. All of those things were in play and I was totally okay with that. In fact, being by myself in the St. Louis Aquarium, it's kind of a cool feeling. Personally, I just wanted to feel what that would be like and document the lone coral tank that they have at the St. Louis Aquarium before it starts to fill in and grow. Field trip time. I wanted to pay a visit to my friends at the St. Louis Aquarium. Obviously, it's not open to the public right now, but I've been such a big fan of what they've been doing with their live streams lately. And so I was like, hey, can I like come get some video? And they were like, wear a mask and practice proper social distancing and, and you can come in. So let's go inside and take a look at what the St. Louis Aquarium looks like without anybody in it. I had to come and check this out because this is my favorite part of the St. Louis Aquarium here. Uh, I'm not technically alone, I guess. Uh, Tim and Charmaine are in here cleaning. Some algae off the rocks. The maintenance must go on, but look at that beautiful view. And it's quiet. It's so quiet. It's eerie. It's like eerie and peaceful at the same time. Oh. I feel like I'm in the tank. I was only allowed to take video at a couple different exhibits. Uh, I'm happy I got to see Shark Canyon though. This is one of their biggest exhibits at the St. Louis Aquarium and definitely one of the stars of the show. Shark Canyon is 250,000 gallons of water and contains more than 60 species of fish. This is the J window. If you walk up really close, you'll feel like you're in the tank. This is probably one of the best viewing panels in the entire aquarium. I love the sharks and the rays that are in here and they've got a giant grouper and just some really big fish in here. But I think the star of the show really for me is the various schools of fish in this tank. I could literally stand here for hours and just watch. It is mesmerizing. It's also really hard to describe how eerie it is with nobody here. The aquarium has been absolutely awesome with their live streams during this stay at home order. In fact, the kids and I have plopped ourselves in front of the computer several times to watch some of the live streams that they have. One of my favorites was the shark dive. One of their animal curators was in there, Aaron, and they have a mask that allows you to actually speak underwater, which is really cool. Personally, it's been on my bucket list for a while, but I would love to do a broadcast of our show from the Shark Tank. I think that would just be awesome. They've also got a baby sloth named Coconut, and it comes out to have breakfast with the guests every morning at 9.30. And my kids really enjoy the live stream with the sharks and rays, the touch pond they have there. It's one of several different touch pond experiences for the kids. And if you wanna watch any of the live streams, just check out the St. Louis Aquarium Facebook page. I've linked that below. Here's a giant Pacific octopus. It's insanely smart as most octopuses are. I was told, that it spent a week out of sight because it found a way to get behind the faux rock structure that's in the tank with him. And for whatever reason, this octopus was really lively and I feel like it was just craving 
a little bit of attention from outside of the glass. I wanted to show you my favorite tank in the entire St. Louis Aquarium, and this is because I'm a giant nerd. This is the coral tank. This was one of the last displays to go in. I was invited to participate in several walkthroughs as the aquarium was being built and on the final walkthrough, like a week before the place opened, the coral tank still didn't have rocks in it. As a slash coral club member here in town, we got to go in a week before and see all the filtration and the tanks and behind the scenes. It was a really, really cool experience and I hope to take you on a backstage tour at some point as well. And the funny thing is, is a couple of our coral club members here in town are actually on the life support team here at the aquarium. You saw one of them earlier cleaning algae off the rock in the shark exhibit. His name is Tim, he's awesome. Now most of this coral has been locally sourced from some of our coral shops here in town. Eventually, they're gonna take donations from local members here in town. Uh, and that's once they get the frag tanks set up behind the scenes. This display is about 1,500 gallons with a 500 gallon sump, so you're looking at about 2,000 gallons total. For lighting, they're running Orphix, actually. They've got giant commercial size kessels on some of the other tanks in the aquarium as well. I was happy to document this tank in the early stages because unlike other exhibits in public aquariums, the coral tanks are always changing. I've also mentioned a couple times to the higher ups at the aquarium that it might be neat to have something like the Frost Museum in Miami has. Now we've seen uh, Richard Bach from the Aficionado channel talk about the entirely aquacultured hobby grade tank that they have at the Frost Museum. Super weird to be in the St. Louis Aquarium pretty much by myself. Now I know that there was people there, there's animal caretakers and zookeepers and all of those uh, you know, workers that are having to take care of the animals, but eerie very eerie and at the same time one of the most magically peaceful experiences of my life if you get a chance to come to st louis eventually whenever we can start traveling again and you know living our lives you have to stop by the st louis aquarium it's not the biggest aquarium in the world but the kids are going to love it because that's who they had in mind when they built this place educational and very interactive. I'm so happy to see the revitalization of this part of our town. Uh, we got a Ferris wheel, which is fantastic. It's just a great place to take the kids. It's right next to the Enterprise Center, which is where the St. Louis Blues play, and just down the street from Bush Stadium where the St. Louis Cardinals play. Now, today's tour was fairly brief, and that was just because they didn't want me walking around everywhere in the aquarium, and I totally understand that. I was really just there to document the coral tank and was pleasantly surprised when I was able to go over to Shark Canyon and see the octopus and a whole bunch of other exhibits too that were in that same area. And it will not be the last video from the St. Louis Aquarium. Like I said, I wanna donate a piece of my coral. I also wanna give you a tour behind the scenes and show you what kind of filtration they use on a commercial level. I think that's just super interesting stuff that you might also find interesting. If you'd like to support the aquarium, they have a foundation and they do a lot of great things for the kids in our community here in St. Louis. I know that kind of feels weird if you don't live here, but you know, if you feel so inclined and you've got an extra $5 or whatever and you wanna donate that to the St. Louis Aquarium, obviously it's gonna be put to good use. And if you'd like to support this channel, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. A quick plug for the Reef News Network. They just recently did an episode with Scott Crow from Ocean State Aquatics. If you've ever had an idea to open up your own local fish store or start a coral farm or anything like that, you will love this episode because Scott will take you through what it took for him to create Ocean State Aquatics. We're talking from $2,000 to his name to a growing business that is Ocean State Aquatics in about 10 years. They're currently building the Ocean State Aquatics Superstore right now. So obviously things are going well for Scott Crow and you can learn all about his journey in the Reef News Network episode. Again, I'll link that below and also keep up to date on the Superstore opening, which I think is happening very, very soon here on their Facebook, on their Instagram, and on YouTube as well. I hope you're staying safe, and I hope to see you back here next week for another video. Is there any videos that you would like me to cover? Go ahead and put that in the comment section below. That's just code for, I've run out of ideas. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Plenty of ideas. 
I just don't know how many would be appropriate for YouTube. Okay, uh, time to go. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't dropped a like yet. Drop a like. Um, oh, that's my cue.